Welcome to Down and Dirty. I'm Jim Martin. And today I thought I possibly should be wearing my black veil because all of my wonderful plants that I've been growing all spring and summer and into the fall, they've all turned into mush. And if you're like me, now you're trying to decide what should you do in the garden this time of year. Now it's time to dish the dirt. And this time of year, you're going to find me walking the neighborhoods, picking up bags of leaves. And because all the trees have finally dropped their leaves, it's a great time of year to go ahead and collect these up, hold on to them, use them as mulch in the garden, or use them in your compost pile. Um, but also keep in mind that by leaving the, bag, the leaves in the bags, over time they will actually break down and before you know it, they'll be composted down enough and you can use them um, directly in adding amendment to the soil. There's a lot of mess in the garden and some of this stuff doesn't need to stay around until March. Um, usually we tell people to cut the, uh, the anything that needs to be cut back around February. But this year, because our freeze came in December, some of these things we don't want to sit around and look at for that long, not to mention the fact that it's pretty nasty. I mean, here we have a crinum that has pretty much completely melted to the ground. And, you know, I'm not much into gloves, but when I work with this mess, I do wear gloves, especially it's cold. And imagine how cold your hand's going to be without these gloves on. So one of the things that I almost immediately clean out when it, freezes and turns to mush are the crinums. Any foliages that just get nasty and slimy and you can see I'm cutting it basically within six inches um, and what will happen is new growth will spring from that. Now some people say that um, or they claim that it's sometimes better to leave this mush um, around the plant it acts as an insulator. Um, I found over the years that it at least here in the low country, I haven't seen uh, that be much of a, a factor with whether these plants come back or not. Um, and to be frank with you, when this mess starts to dry out and cakes around that plant, it's even harder to get out. So the tropical things, when they turn to mush, I go ahead and cut that foliage out almost immediately. Another one that we have here that also you can, <laughs> you can see I'm getting tangled up in it. Isn't that nasty? Oh, look at that. Yucky, yuck, yuck. Ugh. All right. Another one are gingers. And, you know, ginger lilies are so popular here um, in the low country. Gingers are another one. They just turn to complete mush. So you can either pull them or cut them right at the base, as you can see. And I go in and I cut them all. And not only that, it makes the garden start to look a little bit nicer this time of year. All right, so cut all those tropical things that turn to mush. We're going to get those out of the garden right now. There are lots of plants in the garden this time of year, such as the camellias, which still have buds on them. But if you don't come in and clean out those dead flowers from this past freeze, you're going to be looking at a bunch of dead blooms with a bunch of new stuff coming on. So what my suggestion is, if there are a few things that you're going to try to do this time of year, one of them should be so that you can enjoy the plants that are putting out flowers, clean that nasty flower off the plant. Here we are in the vegetable garden and it's been trashed just as much as everything else in the garden. But the difference is, is that many of these cool season vegetables, even though they were taken back and turned to mush, inside there's uh, new growth starting to occur. So what we want to do is go ahead and remove all of this dead material, put it into the compost pile, and give these plants a chance to grow back. Uh, and so what we're going to do is basically just go in there and cut it as close as we can. And you can see here the new growth is starting to, to 
come out. So get in there, clean, clean out that mush, and before you know it, you're going to have vegetables on the table again. While all that tropical stuff in the garden looks really ratty and mushy and nasty this time of year, there are a few structural perennials, such as ornamental grasses and things like this Lespedeza, that have nice branching to them. And I'm not going to go ahead and cut these back right now. Um, they add a little bit of winter interest in the garden, and at the same time, they're not mushy, and cutting them back, I'm going to do that in February, right before any new growth starts to occur, uh, basically at the end of the month. There are some plant groups over the years I've noticed that people look at them during this time of year and they say, that's yucky, ugly, I'm going to go ahead and cut that back. And there are plants that we shouldn't do that with. And the hydrangea is one of them. And even though the foliage on this hydrangea is totally fried for the most part, we're not going to cut this back right now. And the main reason is anything that's going to flower in the uh, spring, late spring, um, it has already formed its uh, flowers and it's ready to go. And the big leaf hydrangea, which this is one of them, um, is one of those plants. Other plants like your forsythia, like your flowering quince, anything again that's going to be spring flowering, and azaleas, especially azaleas, we don't want to do any cutting back of these plants right now. So one of the three things that you should be doing in your garden this time of year after the freeze. Number one, if it's mushy and nasty, it's time to cut it out. Number two, if it's a plant that's pretty, has structure, such as ornamental grasses or some of our perennials or plants that come back year after year, leave them in the garden until February. They're adding interest. And the third one is, if you've got plants such as daffodils that are starting to poke their little heads out of the ground, you don't want to leave a bunch of mess laying on top of them. Let them have plenty of room to grow through so they can develop and... Sooner or later, they're going to be flowering. You see, I even left out a few things that I shouldn't have, and now they're completely gone. So it happens to the best of us. I'm Jim Martin with the Charleston Parts Conservancy. To learn more about the Conservancy and what we're doing, and also to learn more about how to do things in your own low country garden, check us out at charlestonpartsconservancy.org. See ya!